Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show the top five super macro images I got on a recent dive trip to Carousel. Let's check it out. Okay, well here's my super macro setup that I used in Carousel. I have at the left my Nikon D7100 in the Ike Lake housing, a 1.4x teleconverter to the right, Next to that is the 60 millimeter macro lens, and finally, the longer flat port to accommodate the lens and teleconverter with a detachable plus 10 diopter wet lens on the top for ultra super macro. You need to get very close to the subject with super macro, and the camera and the subject have to be still to allow careful focusing. This is a close-up showing the teleconverter between the camera body and the 60 millimeter lens inside the flat port and the detachable plus 10 diopter wet lens over the flat port. For these super macro images, I use the lowest ISO 100, a pretty fast shutter speed, 1 to 200, fast but still slow enough to sync with the strobe, and a fairly small aperture since there is such poor depth of field. With super macro, we need precise focusing. The camera does not know what exactly to focus on, so I usually lock my focus and rock back and forth ever so slightly to focus on exactly what I want to focus on. For super macro, since you are so close to the subject, you must pull your strobe or strobes in tight, almost touching the flat port. This image shows the position I use with a single strobe. It's just above the port. Um, super macro has some advantages. There's almost always something available. With super macro, you can make the mundane subjects look stunning. And there's only one thing to concentrate on, the subject. You don't have to worry about a busy or distracting background, distractions from multiple subjects, or getting proper illumination and focus on both the foreground and the background, because you're just concentrating on the foreground. All right, let's get on to my top five images. This is a nice goby on a coral, nice profile shot, pretty clear, and a non-distracting background. There actually was stuff in the background, but with super macro, again, the depth of field is so small that the background is quite blurred and non-distracting. I actually really like this image. Here's another one. Of course, this is the eye, and it's a trumpet fish. The trumpet fish was vertically oriented, facing toward the left. Its pear-shaped pupil was pointing low and to the left in front of the trumpet fish to give it some binocular vision when looking ahead. And you can see the large round lens and some overlying orange color in the cornea called iridescence. I like that image, nice and sharp too. I noticed a beautiful orange coral and glimpsed a blenny disappearing into a little hole. Now this image was not at all technically hard to get, but I had to wait a long time for that blenny to re-emerge. When it finally did, I had already locked my focus on the adjacent coral and just took a picture of the blenny. In here, I think it's the background that makes the image so cool. This is the eye, a super macro shot of the compound eye of a slipper lobster. It's the most magnified image I have of the eye of this particular animal. I love the beautiful surrounding purple eye ornamentation. I really think it's stunning. And this is a super macro shot of the eye of a moray eel. This image shows what appears to be nerves in the cornea, which I have never seen before. Fantastic detail. Now, believe it or not, the visibility was quite poor, but you'd never know it. With super macro, the water column is, so, is very small and the depth of field is so limited that backscatter is not much of a problem. This is probably my favorite super macro image of the entire trip. Well, I sure hope you found this video helpful. Thanks so much for tuning in.